Recording in progress. Morning. Morning, students. Good morning. <coughs> Co-host, <coughs> Okay. So, online students, uh, please confirm the audio quality. Okay. Thank you. So, online students, for any doubts, uh, please send your message to co-host. Okay. <coughs> send your doubts to co-host. Right. <coughs> okay. So, I am Kanagaraj, Faculty for Agriculture. I have been in this field for the last 15 years and uh, I am teaching uh, agriculture for the last 8 years. Okay. <coughs> I have gone to UPS entry for 5 times, uh, 3 times for Indian uh, IAS and uh, 2 times for Indian Forest Service with the Agri and the Botany optional. And how many are uh, agri students, BSc agri background? Okay, good. <coughs> All right. So non-agri. Okay. Uh, graduation. Uh, BSc Math mathematics. Plant biotechnology. Plant biotechnology. Okay. Biotechnology. Animal biotechnology. Okay, right. <coughs> So, first basically I will uh, tell you about uh, the choosing of optional and then we can decide, okay. And if you are convinced to choose aggregate optional, then we can proceed further, okay, right. So, first I will give you the basic idea regarding the how to choose optional in APSC. And you might have seen lot of videos and all, okay, right, okay. See, there are three kinds of uh, optionals in APSC, humanity subjects, uh, pure science and uh, applied science, right. So, here the humanity subjects, uh, the sociology, public administration, anthropology, so, these are the very common, the popular optionals in UPSC, right. And uh, recently, aggregate is also one, one more uh, popular optional, it is getting popular recently. So, in the top five optionals, aggregate is also one of the optional, okay, right. So, next to the pure science, uh, botany, zoology, physics, chemistry, okay, they all come under the, the pure science optional. Then applied science, agriculture, forestry, so these subjects are called applied science, right. So, we apply the, the basic principles in the in this science, okay. For example, um, agriculture is a applied science of botany, okay. So, we apply the, the, the concepts of botany in agriculture, right, okay. So, it is a mix of both, okay. It contains, agriculture contains both uh, general subjects as well as technical subjects, okay, right. <coughs> so, what is the advantage, okay, the humanity subjects, okay. We will choosing humanity subjects like sociology, anthropology, public administration, uh, political science, okay. So, in these subjects, the advantage is no need to mug it up, okay. So, if you go through the syllabus, then we can prepare the content based on the syllabus and we have to add a current affairs. So, for any question, at least you must have some awareness about the particular topic because most of the topics are the sociology, public administration. We have been studying all these subjects, okay, for, since your childhood. From, okay, since your school days, you have been studying all these subjects, the sociology, geography, anthropology, everything, okay, right. So, at least you must have some idea about the particular topic. So, you don't need to mug it up everything, right. So, based on your uh, understanding, based on your uh, the current knowledge, so you can, uh, at least you can manage those questions, right. But in uh, pure science and applied science, the problem is, unless otherwise, okay, if you do not know the content, you cannot write anything, okay. If you do not know the particular content, suppose if you are asking DNA, RNA, structure of DNA or DNA replication process in eukaryotes, right. If you do not know the content, then you should not attempt that question. If you try to attempt, you will get zero mark, okay. So, if you know nothing about the particular topic, then just okay, simply we can leave that, okay. This is the problem in the pure science area. But the biggest advantage is when compared to humanity subjects, in the humanity subjects, you need to update with the current affairs. Your writing skill is very, very important. If you have very good writing skill, then for, I am, okay, I am talking about non-agree students. 
see for agri students clearly i'm saying that without any hesitation you can choose agri optional okay this is the best optional for the agri students okay i'll tell you the reason why but for agri students without any doubt you can select agri optional i'm talking about non agri students you can think about whether to choose agriculture or humanities subjects it's based on your strength you can decide right if you are very good at writing skill then you can choose this subject okay and if you are weak at uh, mugging up of facts scientific names right and okay in those areas okay if you are weak at those areas then you can choose humanities subjects right and uh, the advantage in agriculture okay the applied science and pure science the subject is static in nature right and uh, every okay if we see the last 10 years question paper most of the questions will get repeated every time okay if you go through okay, if you prepare for the last 10 years question paper then almost 80 90% of the questions will be repeated in the next year also right but in the humanities subjects every year they update the with the current affairs it's a dynamic in nature that is the problem in the okay, that's why i'm telling that writing skill is more important you need to relate with all the the current events current happenings okay, in the area you need to analyze but in the pure science area no analytical question rarely they ask some analytical questions and direct questions but most of the questions are very direct questions write about the cell theory write about uh, cell structure and function draw a neat diagram of cell structure right so most of the questions are very direct questions if you know the answer we can give the correct answer and we can get full marks right so in the in general the marking pattern upsc for a good answer they will give uh, out of 10 maximum we can get 6.5 for a good answer okay that is the maximum mark they will award okay 6.5 is the maximum mark that's all but in agriculture in the pure science suppose if they are asking this question dna structure the dna structure model proposed by watson and crick okay suppose if they are asking this question if you give the correct full answer then there is a chance that we can get even 8 marks out of 10 that's the advantage in the pure science optional but we need to mug up lot of facts scientific names and you know the content very well and you need, you need to understand the concepts clearly Okay, most of them are uh, conceptual oriented in the pure science and applied science, right? So this is the uh, this is about uh, the strength and weakness. Okay, about the the two kind of subjects, right? Okay. <coughs> and uh, especially in agriculture, so why we have to choose agriculture? Okay, what are the advantages in agriculture for both? Uh, because it's highly suitable for the agri students as well as for uh, students with the biology background. They can choose agriculture optional, right? And uh, many of you are now, okay, you don't know, you don't know about uh, an uh, important fact. See, <clears throat> among the various UPSC optionals, the highest success rate is in agriculture, for agriculture. Right? And uh, often, okay, you are, uh, the facts are misleading because we are, we are actually see, okay, seeing the actual numbers. But you have to see the proportion. Right? See, mostly the popular optionals like uh, sociology, geography, and other op public administration, political science, so these optionals, the number of students, those who are appearing for mains is very high. Okay, so those who take these options are very high. So we have to see the how many students are appearing for this examination and how many students are actually clearing the, the final result. Right? So for agriculture, every year approximately 100 students they are appearing for the mains. And out of this, on an average, 8 to 10 students they clear in the final examination. So almost 8 to 10 percentage result. Whereas if you see the other optional, the percentage is just to 5 to 6 percentage. In sociology, it is around 8 percentage or 7 percentage. In geography, it is very less, 5 to 6 percentage. So, 5,000 candidates appearing for the mains and just 50 to 100 students, they are clearing the, the final result. So, you should not see the actual number, you have to see the proportion. Right? So, that is why I am saying, this is the option with the highest success rate in UPSC among the major optionals. Okay? All right. So, second thing, Previously, students, okay, they don't select uh, the pure science optionals because they don't have any relation with the GS area. So why mostly the students, okay, why these options are getting, already they got popular because the sociology, public administration, geography, political science, they have a strong uh, link with the current affair, the GS area. So many subjects, okay, you need to study about, okay, if you are taking public administration optional, then you need to worry about the quality area. Geography optional, geography GS will be covered, okay. Political science, again, quality area will be covered. Sociology, society area will be covered, right? But recently, UPC is giving more importance to agriculture, right? And the, in the prelims, we can expect <coughs> more than 15 questions, combinedly three subjects, geography, environmental science, agriculture. These th subjects are very, very important. So combinedly, they are asking more than 15 questions from this area. 
because all these subjects are interlinked. Right? You need the geographical knowledge, you need the uh, environmental science knowledge to understand agriculture. All are interlinked subjects. Okay? Suppose if there is a question about the biodiversity conservation, it comes in environmental science, it comes in geography, and it, it also comes in the agriculture. Conservation of biodiversity. Right? So, commonly we can expect more than 15 questions from this area in the prelims alone. Then, mains in the GS paper 3, agriculture is one of the important subject. We can expect four questions, two 10 marks, two 15 marks. So, totally 50 marks in the GS paper 3. Right? <clears throat> so, one more advantage if you prepare for agriculture optional, then we can also use it for our GS preparation. Moreover, the problem is one more issue is in a GS agriculture, they are asking technical questions. That's the problem. Right? Only the students with the agriculture background or agree optional students, they can able to attempt those questions. And out of four questions they are asking, one or two questions are highly technical in nature. They are asking from the subject, agree the subject. So not only students, okay, this is very difficult, very difficult for them to answer those type of questions. Okay, right. <coughs> then uh, just I told you, the syllabus is very definite. Even okay, so for the entire okay, the, for last case, we see the go through the last eight years, ten years question paper. Not a single question from the out of syllabus. Okay, all you have to do is just you have to fill uh, prepare for the entire syllabus. Each and every word in the syllabus is important. So you need to have proper study material, proper content for each and every topic in the syllabus. Then we can attempt. You can be able to attempt all the eight questions, right? So in the UPSC, you know the exam pattern. Do you know the exam pattern in UPSC? In the mains, in the optional, they will ask eight questions. So it, it divided into two section, section A and section B. So section A, four questions. Yeah. Audio block either. Yeah. Okay, right. Thank you. So in the exam pattern in our UPSC mains, Loaded into two sections, section A, section B. There are 250 marks, okay, 50, 500, 500 marks. Paper 1, 250 marks. Paper 2, 250 marks. And each paper loaded into two sections, okay. So in the section A, four questions. And the section B, four questions. Uh, which one? Either one. Which area on the first layer from, from starting? Huh? Starting layer. Okay. <coughs> okay, the okay. Right. So the exam pattern, okay, section A and section B. There are uh, eight questions totally. Out of eight questions, you need to attempt five questions. So choice is there. In a GS mains, you don't have any choice. You have to attempt all the questions. But in our uh, optional mains, we have choice. Okay. So out of eight questions, you need to attempt five questions. And uh, there is there are some conditions. Question number one and five are compulsory. Question number one and five are compulsory. So two questions are compulsory. So you need to attempt remaining the three questions. Again, one more condition. We cannot select uh, the three questions randomly. Again, one more condition. We have to select, apart from the compulsory question, we need to select one more question from either section A or section B. We cannot select all the three questions from a single section. Okay. So this is the exam pattern in our optional mains. Right. So either you can choose a, a question, okay, two question from section A and, a, uh, sorry, totally three question from section A, two question from section B or Two question from section A, three question from section B. This is the exam pattern. Okay, right. So in the entire syllabus, <coughs> the questions are mostly from the our syllabus point. Okay, definite syllabus. Okay, mostly uh, there is no single question from out of syllabus. Right. So you need to prepare proper content for each and every topic in the syllabus. Entire syllabus is important. Okay. So further, we need a proper study material. I will tell. Okay, I will tell, tell about later. Right. Then one more advantage in the, just I told you, in the pure science optional, the evaluation is sub objective in nature, not subjective in nature. Whereas in case of our uh, humanity subjects, the evaluation is subjective in nature. That is, you have to convince the examiner, right? 
So if you are okay, if you are asking any analytical question or opinion based question, then the marks will vary. You have to sync with the, the examiner, right? But here, if you give the correct content, you will get the marks. There is no question of any subjective nature, okay? So if for example, if you are asking RNA structure, then if you write the correct answer, then they will give the award the marks, okay? There is no any contradiction between the you and the examiner, okay, for the key, because it is universally accepted facts, DNA, RNA, cell biology. So all those areas are universally accepted models. There is no difference of opinion, okay, in the particular topic. So the evolution is objective in nature. So if you give the correct answer, you will get maximum marks, okay, right. <clears throat> and uh, one more advantage in uh, choosing aggregate optional. If suppose if you are preparing for Indian Forest Service, then we have, uh, you are in the, okay, in the students with the aggregate optional, they are in highly advantageous position. Because, okay, they have, they can choose uh, botany, because in the Indian Forest Service, you have to choose only the science based optional. These, uh, the human rights subjects are not allowed in the Indian Forest Service, okay, it's a purely technical exam. So you have to choose, you, you must have science background and you can choose only the science based optionals, okay, right. So in that case, aggregation and botany are the best combination, right. So I have attended an interview with the agri and the botany combination. So in our course, after the end of the course, I will also uh, guide you regarding the botany optional, how to prepare for the, the botany area. Okay, right, because these subjects are, uh, many things are common, many subjects are common between aggregation and botany, especially in the paper two. In agriculture, we study about <coughs> plant breeding, genetics, cell biology, these areas, and these subjects are again, you can, uh, you will study in the botany also, right. So for other optional students, it is very difficult for them, mostly the engineering graduates, okay, they apply for the Indian Forest Service. So the problem is, they choose some other optional, okay, sociology, geography in the CEC mains. Again, for Indian Forest Service, they have to choose forestry geology. That is the best combination. Actually, in the IFOS, only four optionals are uh, um, the well adapted optionals, okay. Otherwise, okay, we cannot choose other optionals because uh, they are extremely pure science, uh, physics, chemistry, zoology and all there, okay. But the four options are very common options in the Indian Forest Service. Either the students, they can choose forestry geology or agribotany. These are the four famous options in the Indian Forest Service. So they have to study three optionals. The students with the sociology are some other optional, they have to study three optionals in the Indian Forest Service. But we can focus on only the two optionals. So one more advantage in our uh, Forest Service, okay. <coughs> right. Okay. So, the highly suitable for, okay, um, the aggregate optional. Agri-graduates, without doubt, you can select aggregate optional. It's the best, best optional. Then uh, for non-agri graduates, uh, usually I recommend uh, students with the biology background. So if you have studied the botany, okay, botany, zoology in your plus one plus two, uh, the higher secondary, then you can uh, choose agri optional. Or students with uh, any science background, science uh, degree, uh, biotechnology, biochemistry, BSc botany, okay. So those students, okay, they can choose the, the agri subject. No need to worry about that, okay. But uh, students, okay, with, uh, if they don't study any biology in your plus one plus two, then it's a little bit difficult. Usually I don't recommend uh, students with, uh, suppose, okay, if you have studied science only up to 10th, then from starting from plus one plus two, many students, okay, they enter, they, mostly they choose uh, the computer science, other, okay, commerce and other optionals, okay. So usually I don't recommend uh, for those students, okay. You can uh, think about some other optional, right. If you have studied, if you have any strong science background, then you can choose aggregate optional. Right. But in our class, I will explain uh, everything uh, clearly, okay. <clears throat> so regarding uh, this course, in our course, okay, regarding our, uh, the coming July, the course starts from July 27th, Thursday, it's a regular, regular uh, course, Monday to uh, the weekend, okay, sorry, weekdays, okay, Monday to Friday. So evening, uh, 6.30 to 8.30. But the timing and all, uh, we will fix later, okay, we will, I will uh, confirm it later, okay, right. So July 27, okay, the course starts approximately 4.5 months. By the end of November, we finish the course. The course duration is 4.5 months, okay, right. So what are the advantages, okay, in our, uh, in, uh, okay, in our coaching? So first thing, just I told you that in agriculture, the pure science is optional. You need to, because the questions are completely from the syllabus only. 100% of the questions are from completely from syllabus only. So you need to cover the entire syllabus. For that, you need to have proper study material. Whether you are referring the 
stand reference books or any material you need to okay you need to make notes from the for entire syllabus in the our optional okay right so our uh, i have prepared okay, almost i have got 2 years for the preparation of the material and uh, since 2021 i am distributing materials for our class students okay before that before 2021 uh, usually i recommend a stand reference books for uh, agriculture but the problem is for agriculture we need to refer more than 10 books because for each and every subject you need to refer the stand reference books okay so we need to refer more than 10 books uh, the problem is uh, for many topic in the syllabus you cannot find the direct content in the book that's one more problem even if you refer the stand reference books for many topic in the syllabus we cannot find direct answer so you need to search a lot of okay, apart from the 10 reference books you need to search in the internet also for many topics in the syllabus so that's why i released the, the problem because i have been in this field all 15 years and I am, I was also preparing for the aggregate optional. So, I faced a lot of difficulty during my preparation. So, I thought of, okay, preparing on material. So, I worked nearly two years for the completion of this material. So, since 2021 batch, I am giving this material, okay. And you are my uh, 21st batch, okay. Because Delhi also, yesterday, uh, I, I conducted a orientation in Delhi, okay. So, simultaneously, we are conducting uh, in, a, in a year, three batches. In July, two batches, uh, weekday batch in Chennai. And a weekend batch in Delhi. Every weekend I will be in Delhi. Saturday, Sunday batch in Delhi. And again, we conduct one more batch in the month of November. Okay, so three batches every year, right? So you are almost okay, my 21st batch, right? <coughs> so you will get this material, okay? I worked for the material and uh, it's the complete material. I can guarantee, okay? I can uh, confidently I can say that this is the best material in India. You can compare it with any material. Uh, this is the best material for you. It's a 2000 page material. You will be given uh, six volumes. Okay, paper 1, 3 volume, paper 2, 3 volume booklet. You will get after enrollment of the course, within a week they will provide the, the course material. So, 6 volumes, it will come in 6 volumes, okay, right. It covers the entire syllabus. So, simply you can depend fully on the material, no need to refer any other standard the reference books. Just to follow my class notes and we also conduct a regular class test. Every week, okay, every week we conduct the class, the regular class test will be there. So, just to follow my class notes, material, and uh, my, uh, the class test questions and answer key. After every completion of every test, I will provide answer key also. You can just follow that, no problem, okay? It will cover 100% of our agreed syllabus. Okay, All right, that's the biggest advantage. And uh, I will explain the concepts very clearly. Okay, we will see on demo class here, okay? All right. So, conceptual clarity, you will get, uh, because uh, in agriculture, many topics uh, that need uh, conceptual understanding. In the paper one, uh, especially the soil science, nutrient management, so these topics we need the conceptual clarity and again in paper 2 the cell biology genetics plant breeding plant physiology seed technology these areas are conceptual okay conceptual oriented so i will explain all the concepts very clearly even for non agri students the, with the biology background they can easily understand my class okay right i will start from the basics only okay don't worry about that so directly i won't go to the agriculture subject first i will start from the basics okay in the cell biology genetics and all i will start from the basic areas then in our uh, coaching regularly okay every week i will provide a, a class test apart from that uh, uh, regularly i will provide a daily exercise daily okay after the in our okay in our regular class see every day i will uh, give class assignments because as an agri graduate you know the content very well because you have studied the subject for the four years okay course and you know the content very well you know aware of the the various subjects but the problem is the UPSC answer rating is different from the our uh, college answer rating. So I will provide uh, the coaching for the how to write answer for the UPSC. Okay, so we have daily answer rating practice will be there. I will uh, actually after the enrollment of the course, we create a separate channel, Telegram channel. And in the channel, you will be all the information will be given in the Telegram channel. So regularly, daily I will send uh, practice questions in the Telegram channel. You can uh, practice answer rating in your uh, room and uh, send it to me Telegram number. Okay, I will provide my personal number. Okay, right. So apart from the weekly test, we can also conduct the regular answer rating practice. Then uh, the topus answer copy. You will get the topus answer copy. We can match with our answer rating practice. Okay, we can enrich our answer rating practice with the topus answer copy. Almost for agriculture, all the, the stu those students who clear with the option are my students. In the entire South India are my students only. Okay, every student cleared from the South India are my students. Hyderabad, Bangalore, Trivandrum, Chennai. Okay. And last year also, the toppers, all for, okay, they are my students. Those who scored highest mark in agriculture, Harini, 286, and uh, 
Devi Priya Ajit from Trivandrum, she scored a 274. So these are the highest score in agricultural option last year. And uh, before that, in 2021, uh, Swati Sri, she scored a 303. She is also my student. So I have answer copies of okay, the toppers. So we can share in the, okay, in the class, during our class, I will share the toppers answer copy so that you can go through it. So how to present our answers, how to improve our answers. Okay, right. So and this is the material I told you. This is just okay, one sample copy. So it consists of, okay, it will come in six volumes. So all the syllabus topics are properly organized. Okay. And uh, I updated the material recently. In, a, okay, in the month of June, I updated the material. So it's a revised edition. So I updated with the current recent happenings, okay, current affairs also. In agriculture, mostly we don't need a current affairs. Except a few topics, uh, we don't okay, no need to refer to the current affairs. It's full of static only. 80% of subject is full of static only. Except a few areas we have to okay, on the class we will discuss. I will tell you what are the areas you need to refer current affairs. Okay. So current affairs are not necessary for agriculture. Right? But still I have okay, updated the, the material with the latest uh, evenings, okay, latest uh, events and uh, happenings, everything. Okay, right. You will get the updated material only. And this is our uh, entire syllabus topic in agriculture. The paper one and the paper two. So paper one is like uh, GS paper. Most of the topics, even non-agri students, they can easily understand the uh, paper one area. Uh, basically, the ecology environment. Again, in the um, these areas, anyhow, okay, for uh, even those students who, do, who didn't choose uh, the agriculture optional, they have to study agriculture in the for the GS. GS paper 3 and uh, for the prelims. Okay, so these concepts are again uh, you will study in the your GS also cropping system, cropping pattern, those areas. Okay, right. So there is an ecology environment part again you have to study in the for your GS also. Okay, so ecology environment part and the agronomy area, the cropping system, cropping pattern, irrigation, these topics again you will study in the GS. Right, okay, it will be covered in our option itself. Then soil science, forestry nutrient management, extension and farm management. So these are the major uh, the subjects in our paper one, okay. Then paper two, it's full of technical. So many students of the non-agri background, they can easily understand the paper one area, okay. But uh, paper two, that's why I'm asking you, uh, you need a minimum the science knowledge, okay, science background to understand these areas. So paper two is full of technical because we cannot skip this area. Moreover, to score high marks, you have to attempt these questions only. We can skip in choice, okay? We cannot do like that. Because okay, in the section A, mostly the section A, section B questions are from the first, uh, in a section A, they ask questions from the, the, the first four topics, okay? Then section B, the remaining four topics in the section B. And similarly in paper 2 also, in a section A, in paper 2, section A, mostly the questions are from this area. And uh, section B, the questions are from this area, okay. So here, we can easily skip uh, this part. We can attempt only two questions from section A and uh, we can attempt the maximum questions from this area, section B. But you won't get enough marks, okay. So in agriculture, to get high marks, we have to attempt specific questions and technical questions, right. So you have to attempt more questions from the the genetics, plant breeding and the seed technology, this area, right. So our strategy is, our aim is to cross 300 plus, okay, but it actually varies, okay, last year uh, uh, the top score is 284, okay, uh, but okay, every year uh, okay, depends upon the, the current, okay, the prevailing situation. So uh, in some years, okay, the score uh, cross 300 or some years, okay, 280, 290, right. So based on last year condition, actually in the top 150 rank, only 10 students, they scored more than 300, in the last 150 rank. So, in the last year, the best score in agriculture is anything, not only agriculture, any, any optional, anything above 270 is a good score in optional, last year, okay. But we aim for 300 plus, right, okay. So, the 300 plus, um, easily we can score 140 in paper 1 and 160 in paper 2, this is our strategy, because usually, uh, we can score high marks in paper 2 when compared to paper 1. Actually, paper 1 seems easy. We can easily complete paper 1 within one month. 
it takes very long time to complete paper 2, but scoring is easy in paper 2 when compared to paper 1 because it is te technical in nature, right. So, they give maximum marks for the, the paper 2 area. So, we can, we can aim for a 160 plus in paper 2, 140 plus in paper 1, okay. So, marking is difficult in uh, paper 1 because they are general, the topics, many topics are like GS topics, climate change, greenhouse effect, global warming. So, we have to address these questions technically, specifically. Otherwise, if you write general points, then we will not get enough marks. That is the problem in the paper 1, okay. But you can easily complete the syllabus. So, we have to add a lot of uh, case studies, okay. We will discuss in the class. I will tell you how to improve, how to do value addition in the paper 1, how to score high marks in the paper 1, okay. We have to do a lot of value addition in the paper 1. And moreover, in material also, uh, it will be covered. The examples, case studies, everything will be covered in the material itself. Right. Right. About okay, the overall uh, syllabus. Any doubts? Okay. If you have any doubts, you can ask me. Otherwise, uh, we will see some uh, two, three topics, okay, demo lecture concepts. I will explain. Online right, students, any doubts? regarding course, regarding agriculture optional. And this is my personal number. Still, if you have any doubts regarding the choosing agriculture optional or any guidance regarding the optional guidance, you can message me, okay, or call me. So, in our class, not only if, okay, I am going to teach agriculture only, I have, okay, I have huge experience in this field. Almost, uh, I, have, I gave uh, seven mains. Okay, attended five interviews and uh, seven mains because I never failed in prelims. In my first attempt, I cleared prelims. Okay, so I never failed in prelims, and uh, I had paid for other exams also, NABARD, RBA, anything. Okay, so uh, IBPS, uh, Group One, TNPC, again, okay, Tamil Nadu State Public Service Commission, Group One, Group Two. Already, I am in service. Actually, I am a Group B officer in Tamil Nadu government. So, okay, I was selected actually for many services. Okay, I have selected many services. Even, even agri officer also, agri officer also. Right. I have huge experience in this field. So, for any doubts, not only agriculture optional, for any uh, preparation, okay, for your preparation, for other exams, okay, for interview guidance, for prelims guidance, okay, we will discuss a lot, okay, in the, in our class also. I will share my interview experience and other students' experience, okay, everything, okay, in the topic experience, everything, okay, in the, we will, in the class, okay, we will discuss, right. But apart from that, okay, any, for any guidance, you can call me, no problem. Right. Online students, any doubts? Uh, online students, please send your doubts to co-host. Non-agree students, uh, they have to uh, choose the coaching. Okay. And uh, non-agree students, now with, with the biology background or non-biology background. Okay. See, clearly, I told you that uh, non-agree students with the biology background they can uh, choose aggregate optional, they can manage, okay, no problem and uh, they have to join the coaching, okay. So, without coaching, it is very difficult, okay. For agri students, many agri students, uh, some students are academically very strong, so they go for self-preparation, okay, right. But uh, non-agri students, they cannot go for self-preparation, it is very difficult for them, right, okay. So, because many agri concepts are in the paper and also, they need to understand many agri concepts. So, coaching is best for uh, non-agri students with the biology background and uh, non-agri students with the non-biology background, uh, it is very difficult, okay. But uh, sub, still, you have any okay, interest in the bio, in the agriculture optional, then you can call me, you can uh, talk, okay, we can discuss, right. But my suggestion is usually I do not recommend, okay. Non, non science background students, I do not recommend the agriculture optional, right. So, you can watch uh, because in the coming week, I have a lot of, okay, the regularly we conduct the optional orientation program, 
So, you can attend the other optional orientation program also, based on other you can decide, the non-agree and uh, non-science background students. Paper 1 on the morning, paper 2 evening, single day, okay. At the exam schedule and all you will get, okay, at the time of after clearing prelims, and then they give you the exam schedule, then you can watch, okay, the exam schedule of the GS paper 1, continuously, okay, the essay paper, Tamil language paper will be there, and the GS paper 1, paper 3, paper 4, it will, uh, they will conduct the examination continuously, and they will, they will give one week gap for the optional, okay. Morning paper 1, evening afternoon. Paper 2. Yes, okay, for agri students without doubt uh, they can choose agri is optional. In the class I will explain the concepts clearly, you don't need to worry about that. No, class notes, actually you need to refer material only. In the class, I am not going to dictate any notes because I will provide the material, okay. Again, uh, we do not okay, want to waste the time, okay. In the, actually, I am not, I usually do not dictate, right. I will explain the concepts, okay. I will teach the, the concepts and the class mostly is interactive, the two-way communication, okay. I will ensure that the class should be as interactive as possible and uh, in the class, I will explain the concepts. You can make short notes in the class. I won't dictate line by line. Okay. Yeah, students with the science background they can choose. So, in the course, I will cover the entire syllabus, okay. So, all the topics in the syllabus will be covered in the, in our coaching, okay. I will discuss every topic in the class. See, students with the biology subject. If you have studied plus one plus two in their plus one plus two, if you have studied biology, botany, zoology, then you can choose agriculture optional. Okay. And now over that, you can B farm, particular math, particular See, I clearly told you that any students, okay, non agri students with a science background, that is plus one plus two, if you have studied biology in your plus one plus two, in your higher secondary, you can choose. I will explain agri concepts very clearly in the class. Yes, scientific names are okay, that is why I told you, in uh, pure science optionals, we need to mug up some facts, okay, we need to uh, develop the memorizing capacity, okay. So, the scientific names are important, especially in the paper 1, weed science, we need to remember the scientific names of the, the weeds and in paper 2, entomology pathology, we need to remember the scientific names of the disease and the pest, okay. But do not worry about the entomology and pathology because many agri students, uh, they are hesitant to take agree option because of entomology pathology, but do not worry about that. Entomology pathology maximum they will ask, okay, present this question only one question from the, the okay, our syllabus. So, we can focus on the remaining areas, 
Okay, agree students, so don't, don't worry about entomology pathology. It's not important in our UPSC. Okay. There are some okay, other subjects are there, other uh, syllabus topics are there in entomology pathology. You can focus on other areas. Western disease management we will discuss later. Okay, I will uh, um, in the class I will provide how to cover those areas effectively. Okay. So don't worry about the Western disease management at all. Yeah, we conduct one more batch in June, uh, November, you can uh, attend that class, okay. Based on your convenience, you can choose. But the general plan is regarding um, our, uh, our, okay, so most of you, I think most of you are fresh, freshers, right. So, you enrolled for the, okay, for, for the, you are going to appear for next year, uh, 2024 prelims, right. So, the general, our uh, strategy is for uh, optional preparation, sorry, uh, for UPC preparation, uh, this is the correct time, okay, so after college. In the, in the month of July, we enter into for okay, the preparation. So, from July to December, this is the time for your mains preparation, especially optional. You should complete your optional before December, in the month of November, okay. Along with our course, the course duration is 4.5 months. So, along with our course, you have to complete the your optional preparation. So, we conduct, regularly we conduct the class test, okay, weekly test. So, you can uh, complete the syllabus along with the, the coaching, okay, the course, right. So, before December and the November, you have to complete the optional preparation. Then, after December, you can exclusively focus on the prelims area. The six months time, okay, for a fresher, the six months time is essential for the prelims preparation. Then, after prelims, in the May, after May, usually they conduct, okay, the examination, uh, the mains examination will be on the, in the month of September. So, three months the time gap will be there. So, in the time period, you have enough time to only for revision. Because you, next year you will be very busy, okay. So, do not think that we can prepare optional next year. You cannot do that, okay. So, we, so, it will be very hectic. So, next year after clearing prelims, because many students they are facing the difficulty, right. So, fortunately they clear the prelims, but the problem is it is very difficult for them to manage the optional, GS, SA, everything. Because next year you will be very busy attending uh, GS test, SA test and the optional test. Every week, usually we conduct uh, test every week, right. So, every week you have to attempt all the tests, okay, SA test, GS test and the optional test. So, you have only time for revision. So, you need to complete the optional preparation before December. But many students, the problem is, actually we conduct one more batch in November. But uh, other, that's for many students, they, the, because of uh, the college duration, okay, so many, in many colleges, they complete the course only in the month of, they give the certificate only in the month of August, September. So, the, for late joining students, we conduct one more batch in November. But the problem is, uh, the, uh, when, we, when we start okay, November batch, the course will go up to March, March, April. So, you need to have, okay, the, you need to maintain the balance. You need to, uh, you need to have time, okay, for preparation of your uh, prelims also. That is the problem, okay. But those students, mostly the November batch students, uh, they decide uh, 2025 uh, preparation, okay, optional preparation, the, sorry, prelims appearance. So, but my suggestion is uh, for uh, the July batch is the best, so that you can uh, prepare well in the, okay, before December or before November you can complete the, your optional preparation. Okay, so, this is the best time for your uh, coaching, okay, right. <coughs> so, in agriculture, uh, the two, okay, for agri students, uh, they know that, see in our syllabus, in the, in our syllabus, in agronomy, the cropping system area, one major topic is there, package of practices, okay. So, do not worry, okay, agree students, do not worry about the package of practices and the pest and disease management, Because they are not important in, okay, they are important in our college, okay, in agri, okay, in our, in our college studies, it is important, but they are not important in UPSC. So, we can, we can focus on the some other topics, okay, in the same entomology pathology, other areas are also there. We can focus on those areas and I will give you idea about how to cover package of practices and pest management because it is highly impossible. In the cropping system, package of practices, package of practices is nothing but they will ask you write about uh, the various practices for a crop production, particular crop, right. So, in the syllabus they have given cereal, pulses, oil seeds, millets, cash crops, 
there are more than 100 crops are there. So, it is highly impossible to cover for each and every crop, okay, it is very difficult to cover the what is the seed rate, what is the spacing, what is the weed management practice, what is the irrigation management practice, okay. Again for horticultural crops also they give fruits and vegetables, there are more than 50 fruits are there, more than 50 vegetables are there, but do not worry, they are not important in UPSC. Rarely they will ask one question, that too we can skip in the our uh, choice based question. So, we can attempt the maximum question from the, that is why I am telling. You need to be very strong in the section A. But I will give you an idea how to cover those areas. Suppose if they are asking the compulsory question also, we can manage, we easily we can manage the percentage management and the, uh, the package of practices. I will give you a simple idea how to cover the entire crops that we will discuss in the class. So, in a simple topic, in a nutrient management, some nutrients are essential for crop plants, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, sulfur, then uh, calcium, iron, there are several okay, essential nutrients for the crop plants. Okay, for the normal growth and development of crop plants, they need the, the essential nutrients. Okay, they are called the essential nutrients. And the three major nutrients for crop plants, NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus and the potassium. Okay, right. So, usually these nutrients are called, a, they are highly mobile within the plant. Mobile means mobility, movement. Okay. So, they are highly mobile within the plant. And uh, these nutrients are the sulfur, calcium, ferrous, they are highly immobile within the plant. Immobile means their mobility, their transport is restricted, their transport is very slow, okay, that is the immobile nutrients, right. So, usually these nutrients, okay, you will study that in the our nutrient management topic, that is an important uh, uh, topic okay important repeated question in agriculture uh, write the role of nutrients in the uh, crop plants write the role of the various nutrients in the crop plants right so usually we add one point the nitrogen phosphorus potassium magnesium these nutrients they cause symptoms okay why they are essential right so there is one common question role of nutrients and the, the deficiency symptoms they cause if there is any deficiency of this nitrogen what are the symptoms they cause in the crop plants, on the crop plants, okay, that is one common question, right. So, the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, they cause symptoms on the older leaves. Usually, you can see the discoloration of the leaves, yellowing of leaves, you can see these symptoms on the older leaves, right. And the deficiency of these nutrients, sulfur, calcium and the iron, they cause symptoms on the younger leaves, the browning of uh, the tips, okay, the browning of the young buds, you can see okay, those symptoms on the, the younger part of the leaves. That is because of this the defi deficiency of sulfur, calcium and ferrous. See, the entire nutrient management topic, the soil sense area, it is full of concept oriented. If you understand the logic, then without mugging up, you can easily write the, those points, right. So, this is the basic concept. So, these nutrients are highly mobile in the plant and these nutrients are highly immobile within the plant. So, there is a strong relation between so, this concept is important for the, the deficient symptoms produced from the crop plants, okay. For example, the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, they are highly mobile. So, in the soil, when the crop plants, they take nutrients from the soil, right. Since these nutrients are highly mobile, so immediately after absorption by the roots, they are transported to the upper parts of the plants. So, here this translocation, it is called, it is a movement in the vascular system of the plant, xylem and phloem, okay. So, they are moved very quickly in the, within the plant system, right. So, immediately after the absorption by the roots, they are quickly transported to the upper parts of the leaves. And if the soil contains enough nutrients, then they take nutrients continuously from the soil and they transport the nutrients to various parts of the plant. 
right. Suppose if the soil is okay, if there is a deficiency of nutrient in the soil, then after absorption, the entire amount is transported to the upper part of the leaves. For the lower part of the leaves, they will face the deficiency. That is why these nutrients they cause deficiency symptoms on the older leaves. Because all the nutrients absorbed by the plants, the NPK magnesium, they are trans quickly they are transported to the upper parts of the plants. If the soil, if they, okay, if they do not contain enough nutrient, if they do not provide nutrients continuously, then they will not get the nutrients. Okay. So, that is why they cause symptoms on the older leaves. So, we, by default, if they ask this question, okay, out of 4 nutrients, by default we can write this point. If they ask about uh, uh, write the role of nitrogen and the deficiency symptom of nitrogen, the default point, nitrogen cause symptoms on the older leaves of the plants. Phosphorus, same point. Potassium, same point. Magnesium, same point. Whatever the nutrients they ask, we can write the, this point, we can, by default we can write this point. Okay. And again, if they ask these nutrients, then again by default we can write this point because they are highly immobile. Same logic. So, the, the plants, okay, when they take nutrients from, these nutrients from the soil, because their mobility is very slow, right. So, they move very slowly, right. If the soil does not provide enough nutrients for the crop plants, by the time they reach the, the top, the top portion, already nutrients are depleted. So, mostly these nutrients are utilized for the older part of the leaves. The younger parts of the leaves unable to get nutrients from the, the lower portion. So, that is why they cause symptoms on the older leaves because of their immobility in nature within the plants, okay. So, the browning of tissues and the budding problem, okay, dropping of buds, these symptoms are caused by the, the sulphur, calcium and the ferrous, okay. So, it is full of based on logic. If you understand the logic, conceptual clarity, then we can easily address, okay, we can avoid the conceptual error because in the agriculture, one more, okay, the, pro, the we have to be very careful, we should not make any conceptual mistake. It will give you a bad impression. And, okay, examiner, okay, when you see the paper, if you give, if you are writing any wrong information or uh, if you are, okay, if you understand, okay, we do not understand the concept clearly, then uh, it will affect our marks. So, the concept of clarity is very important. That we will discuss in the class. I will clear, okay, I will explain all the concepts very clearly. Okay, right. One thing. And uh, one more, uh, the same logic we can apply. For example, this is the mobility, immobility within the plant. In soil, sonobo. Okay, in the class, I will uh, teach you a lot of uh, code words, shortcuts. Okay, so there is no meaning for sonobo. Okay, just a sonobo. Okay, right. Sonobo means sulfate, nitrate, boron. Okay, three nutrients: sulfate, nitrate, boron. So they are highly mobile in the soil. Okay, see. Sulfur, boron, again boron also come here, okay. So, sulfur, boron, calcium, ferrous, they are highly immobile within the plant, but sulfate, nitrate, boron, they are highly mobile in the soil. That is the difference, okay. And the phosphorus, it is highly mobile within the plant, but the phosphorus is highly immobile in the soil. So, we need to understand this concepts clearly, okay, so that we can. Uh, write the answers logically. Without studying elaborately, we can study, okay, based on logic only, we can give answers, right, okay. See, first we are complete this, okay. So, sulphate, nitrate, boron. So, nitrate, they are highly mobile within the soil, okay, right. Usually, for agri student, uh, you might have heard, okay, in your uh, college, in the crop production area, usually, um, for rice plant, usually, nitrate form of fertilizers are not suitable for rice plant. Mostly we recommend the urea, okay. So, in the nitrogen, there are three different forms of nitrogen. Nitrate form of nitrogen, ammonium form of nitrogen and the one more form is called the amide form of nitrogen, urea, okay. So, usually the scientists, they recommend, uh, they do not recommend nitrate form of fertilizer to rice plant. Usually they recommend the ammonium form or amide form. Why? There is a logic. Why we cannot apply nitrate form of fertilizer for the rice plant? Nitrate form of fertilizer means ammonium nitrate. That is one fertilizer, okay? Ammonium nitrate, sodium nitrate, calcium nitrate. These are the various uh, nitrate form of nitrogen fertilizers. Usually we do not apply this fertilizer for the rice plant. We, we should not apply. We do not apply, we should not apply. Because that leads to inefficiency of fertilizer. That leads to wastage of fertilizer. 
because this nitrate is just I told you that sonobo they are highly mobile within the soil. So mobile mobile means mobility. Trans, they move very freely in the soil. So in case of uh, because usually we grow rice in the standing water, right? Usually we grow rice in the standing water in the waterlogged condition, right? So in the waterlogged condition, these nutrients are highly mobile means the mobility is determined by the solubility. That means they are highly soluble in water. The nitrate is highly soluble in water, so they are subjected to heavy leaching. Leaching means removal of nutrients from the top layer to bottom layer. There is a leaching process. Okay, in agriculture, we use a term called a leaching. So leaching means removal, removal of the metal nutrients from the top layer to bottom layer or some okay, transport okay, from one place to another place. There is a leaching process. Right? So this leaching is mainly caused due to solubility. When a particular material is highly soluble in water, they are subjected to heavy leaching, right? So when when we apply nitrate form of fertilizer, they are highly soluble in water because they have high mobility. So they are leached from the soil. They won't be available to the crop plants. So their efficiency will be affected. Okay? If you apply 100 kg of fertilizer, then the crop plants they can able to take only 20, 30 kg. Remaining 70 percent will be leached out, removed from the soil. Okay. So, the loss is very high in case of the waterlogged condition, especially in the rice waterlogged condition. That is why we apply, we recommend the urea for the rice, rice plant, amide form of fertilizer. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so, these are the logics okay, in our nutrient management topic, soil science. So, these concepts are very important okay, to understand the, how the crop plants, they take nutrients from the soil. Okay, in plant physics, actually, these concepts are again important for our second paper also. There is a close link between the soil science, nutrient management and the plant physiology. There is a strong relation. So, the understanding of these concepts are important again important for our plant physiology area. And in, agri, in agri, agriculture paper and paper 2, one topic is common for both paper and paper 2. They ask this question in both paper and paper 2. That is role of these nutrients. Same syllabus in both paper and paper 2. So, this question we can expect in paper 1. At the same time, this question also expect, okay, we can expect in the paper 2 also in plant physiology area. Okay, common answer for both topics. Right. One more uh, concept again, okay, paper 2. Actually, for the entire paper 2, in our genetics, there is one basic concept loss of heredity. Loss of heredity, the Mendelian, Mendelian law, okay, Mendel's loss of inheritance. That is a okay, main concept. So, for the entire paper 2, the C, up to C technology, uh, the, we need to understand the, the loss of heredity. Okay, so, that is a basis for the to understand the entire plant breeding and the genetics. Okay, right. That we will discuss later. But one topic, um, the ploidy level. Ploidy. Ploidy means what is ploidy? Chromosome number. Okay, it's called a ploidy. Ploidy means chromosome number. Right. So in the ploidy, there are uh, two types of ploidy. One is diploid. Another one is called a polyploid. So, diploid and polyploid, right. So, diploid, who are diploids? Human beings, okay, we are diploid organisms. Diploid means any individual organism contains two set of chromosomes, okay, those are called diploid organisms, so diploid individuals. And this diploid condition is the normal one, normal case, okay, right. Normal individuals are called diploid individuals. So, during our, uh, okay, in our, uh, uh, the reproduction, in the sexual reproduction process, okay, in plants and animals, usually the male and the female gametes, they contain one set of chromosome, they combine together to produce the, the zygote. So, this is the first formed cell after the fertilization process, okay. So, the male gametes, they contain half chromosome, female gametes contain half chromosome, they combine together to produce the, the full set of chromosome. 
So every single okay, every individual they contain two set of chromosome. One is from father, another one is from the mother, another set from mother. So in our human beings, we have 46 chromosome. So the two a number equal 46, and the n number equals to 23. That is a haploid number. Okay, it's called a one more term we use haploid. And the single set of chromosome okay, it is called a haploid, right? So usually this haploid is nothing but gametic chromosome number is called a haploid. Usually individuals they contain two set of chromosomes, but in the gametes they contain only gametes means sex cells. In the male, okay, in the male and the female sex cells they contain only half chromosome number, okay, n n number. Right. So, this occurs due to the meatic cell, uh, there is one cell uh, division process called a meatic cell division. So, usually this meatic, meiosis process occurs in the uh, sex cells, they divide the, the full chromosome into half, full chromosome into half set, okay, right, haploid number. In case of polyploid individuals, they are the deviations from the diploid cell, okay. So, usually the diploid organisms are called the normal individuals or human beings, mostly animals you can see the diploid condition, right. In the polyploid condition, you can, mostly you can see in the plants, crop plants, right? And uh, one more diploid individual, um, the rice, very common example, 2n equal 24. Rice is a diploid crop plant, okay? It contains uh, two set of chromosomes, 2n equal 24. That means, what is the haploid number for rice? 12. That is the haploid number for the rice. That is, in the rice plant, the male and the female gametes, the male anther, and the female, the pistil, they contain only half chromosome number, 12, 12 number, that is all. So, during reproduction, during the fertilization process, they compare together to produce a normal diploid individual, okay, right. Whereas, in case of polyploidy, they contain multiple sets of chromosomes, more than two set of chromosomes. So, they are the deviation from the diploid individual. For example, banana, our edible banana is a triploid species. Triploid means they contain three set of chromosomes. Our wheat, our commonly cultivated wheat plant. So, wheat is a hexaploid that contains six set of chromosomes. Cotton, cotton is a tetraploid species. They contain four set of chromosomes, okay. Then a potato, again is a tetraploid species. So, most of our normally cultivated the crop plants, they are, they contain more than one set of chromosome, more than two set of chromosome, okay. They are called a polyploid individuals, right. So, this is the concept, okay. And we use one more term called a monoploid. Monoploid. So, the haploid and the monoploid, it means single set of chromosome, okay. So, normally individual is having two set of chromosomes and uh, from the two set of chromosome, the half chromosome number is called a haploid. For example, in the rice, sorry, wheat, the chromosome number of wheat is 42. What is the haploid number for wheat? Half chromosome number. That is the haploid number, okay. So, haploid number for wheat is half chromosome number. So, n equal to 21. So, in the wheat plant, in their sex cells, they contain only 21 chromosome, okay. So, this is called a haploid number. We use one more term called a monoploid, right. So, this monoploid we apply only for the true diploid species. Why I am telling this concept? Because often we get confused regarding okay, the monoploid and haploid. Because monoploid and haploid both are same. Usually we say that monoploid means opposite, uh, the half chromosome, okay, diploid means, di means two, mono means single. So, half chromosome number of diploid is called monoploid. So, what is the haploid? Again? half chromosome number of diploid is called a monoploid, haploid. So, it seems, okay, both are same, but they are different, okay. So, monoploid is different from haploid. So, the haploid means we apply for both diploid as well as polyploid species. Whatever the species, okay, simply the gametic chromosome number is called a haploid, haploid number. For example, cotton, 2n equal to 52. So, this is the chromosome number of cotton, 2n equal to 52. So, the haploid number is 26, that is the haploid number for the cotton. So, for any species, whether it is a diploid species or a polyploid species, the half chromosome number is called a haploid number. So, we can apply the concept of haploid for any species, but 
we apply the concept of monoploid only for the diploid species, not for polyploid species. So, only for the diploid species we use the term monoploid. So, for a true diploid species like rice, like human beings, the monoploid, haploid both are same. Okay. So, for rice the haploid number is 12, monoploid number is 12. Okay. But we cannot apply the concept of monoploid for the polyploid species. In that case the half chromosome number is called a haploid number that is all. So, we will say discuss okay, later okay, in the class, I will uh, elaborately we will discuss later okay, the, the, what, are, what are the modifications in this chromosome number because this is one of the important topic in our uh, syllabus, repeated question, applications of this haploids, application of polyploid in agriculture because our normally cultivated uh, fruits, vegetables, everything are polyploid species, you do not know, you don't know that our edible banana is a triploid, most of our common cultivated plants and uh, our uh, big size fruits, la, or the lea, they all another. You know, Polyploids, watermelon, watermelon is a triploid species. See again the logic, okay, they contain, so polyploid species, okay, where we apply this concept in the polyploid. Sometimes we artificially we produce these crops, artificially we develop, okay, grapes, big size grapes over there, huge size grapes, it is another, it is a, it is not a normal diploid species, it is a polyploid species. So, we artificially we enlarge the size of the fruits and vegetables by developing polyploid species because they contain more chromosome, okay, they contain multiples of chromosome against normal diploid individual they contain multiple set of chromosomes. So, we can obtain big sized fruits vegetables from the polyploid species this application, big size watermelon, big size grapes. Suppose if you want an agriculture, if you want to more leaf yield in case of fodder crops, for livestock, for the fodder crops, then in economic product, okay, for example, tea, in tea, what is economic product in tea, leaf yield, for these type of crop plants, we develop the polyploid species, so that they produce more, more profuse tillering of the vegetative part, that is the application of okay, the polyploids. So, this is how, okay, in the class I will teach, okay, their concepts, okay, every time. Uh, so, you can make short notes, okay, from my teaching and I will give lot of examples in the class. So, I will give, okay, lot of examples in the class, you can note down, but you have to study from the material. I will provide the material. So, I will explain the concepts and, I, okay, in your room you can, uh, in the day, okay, so when I teach particular topic then you can directly, okay, in the room you can study the particular topic with your material. That is more than sufficient, okay. And if you have any doubts, you can message me in the telegram, in the WhatsApp, you can message me, I will explain the, I will clear the doubts. Okay. Any doubts regarding class, coaching course? Online students, any doubts? Please send your doubts to co-host. So, the uh, class is okay, the session is over, you can leave okay, if you have any doubts you can ask me, I will be, I will be here only okay, otherwise you can leave. Thank you, thank you all, okay, all the best. Recording stopped.